The film kicks off with a parked car on the roadside. A young girl is seated in the back, sharing a drink with two men. The man in the front seat tells the other guy, you can take her, just as the car's windows roll up and the doors lock. Realizing the danger, the girl becomes frightened and panics. Fast forward several years, and we see a car arriving at a remote vacation rental house. Emma Barrett is inside, accompanied by Joe, her chatty driver. Joe is curious about Emma, wondering why she's alone and not with anyone else. Emma informs him that she's on a weekend trip with her husband, who will join her the next day. Upon reaching her destination, a house surrounded by well-kept trees, Joe reveals that he usually hunts in this area, but was unaware of this specific house. Before Joe departs, he nervously requests an extra tip, to which Emma obliges. Once alone, Emma enters a code to unlock the house and deactivates the security alarm. The place is highly secure, with advanced windows and multiple sturdy locks on the front door. She meticulously checks every detail in the house, including cooking facilities, the kitchen drawer, and the phone connection. Emma also discovers a handbook outlining the rules and guidelines for guests staying in the rental house. While exploring, she encounters a locked room and decides to move on to another room to unpack her belongings. In the evening, she goes for a swim and takes a shower. However, just as she's about to step out of the shower, a loud knock startles her. Emma investigates the source of the knock and finds a dozen roses on her doorstep, along with a note addressed to her. After bringing the roses inside, she locks the door and relaxes with a glass of wine. Accidentally spilling some wine, she notices a small gap between the floor and the table as she attempts to clean it up. Using a flashlight, Emma peers under the table and discovers where the spilled wine is going before her phone rings, interrupting her exploration. She chooses to ignore the call, but becomes further distracted when a car approaches the house. Surprisingly, it's her husband, Henry Barrett, arriving a day earlier than planned. Emma's reaction to Henry's early arrival is not as enthusiastic as one might expect for their wedding anniversary celebration. As they converse, it becomes evident that they've been together for nine years, but are currently facing difficulties in their marriage. Henry makes an attempt at intimacy, but Emma declines, citing that she feels cold. Their physical intimacy issues emerge as a recurring problem in their relationship. Henry retreats indoors, requesting another drink, and Emma pours whiskey for both of them. During this conversation, Henry reveals that he was previously married to a woman named Emily nine years ago, and they had a son together. Suddenly, Emma struggles with plugging in her charger, feeling dizzy. Henry assists her, and eventually they both retire to bed, each experiencing a sense of strangeness. Later that night, the red security system light switches to green, signaling an intruder's entry into the house. We catch glimpses of this individual as they enter the room, change Emma's clothing, and prepare to administer an injection. The intruder is wearing a mask, concealing their identity. The next morning, when Emma awakens, she finds a rose resting on her nightstand, where her phone used to be. A note accompanies the rose, along with two cups of freshly brewed coffee. Initially, she doesn't pay much attention to it, but then she suddenly realizes something isn't right when she notices her attire. She informs Henry that she's wearing a much fancier nightgown than the one she wore to bed, and she inquires about the coffee. Henry, initially dismissive, wishes to continue sleeping. However, Emma insists, and together they read the note, which extends warm wishes for their anniversary. The situation takes a bizarre turn when Henry denies sending any flowers to his wife the previous night, and they discover that their phones are missing. Henry becomes increasingly alarmed when he finds unfamiliar clothing in his wardrobe. Their attempts to escape are thwarted, as they cannot locate the car keys. Hearing noises from the orange trees behind the car, Henry decides to investigate, instructing Emma to return to the house. Inside, Emma locks the door and attempts to call for help using the landline. However, a strange voice on the line commands her to obey us. The TV turns on, displaying various camera views from around the house, including footage of Emma from the previous night, leading her to realize that someone is watching them. Henry re-enters the house with a bleeding head, explaining that he was attacked from behind, but could identify the assailant. The landline phone rings, and Henry answers it, encountering the same mysterious voice that forbids them from leaving the house and insists they must follow specific rules. This voice claims to possess knowledge about their every action and assures them that staying inside is for their own safety. Despite their desperation to escape, their efforts are foiled as the security system activates, locking all doors and covering the advanced windows with metal grates. Emma grabs a wooden stool, planning to break a window for escape, but sudden pain shoots through her, and she clutches her head. Henry hurries to her and finds a strange device causing her pain behind her ear. The voice emphasizes the need to stay indoors for safety. Upon discovering a hidden camera in the smoke detector, Henry tries to remove it but accidentally triggers a sonic device, causing him to collapse. The voice underscores the importance of obedience as the path to happiness, instructing them to proceed to the bedroom. Before entering, the voice insists that a man should open the door for his wife and prompts Emma to smile and thank him. Complying, they change into 1950s style clothing and head to the kitchen. Emma is tasked with preparing dinner, while Henry retrieves a hidden laptop from behind some books, sitting next to her. With no 
internet access, Emma mechanically chops asparagus, while Henry is instructed to open a file on the laptop. To his shock, the file displays text message screenshots between Emma and another person. Though trembling, Henry is compelled to read them aloud as Emma continues cooking. The voice then states, Love doesn't delight in evil but rejoices in truth. The truth may be difficult to hear but it will purify your marriage. Matters take a more distressing turn, as the next file contains a video depicting Emma in bed with another man named Ryan Henry, becomes distraught, and expresses a desire to leave. But the mysterious voice intervenes, commanding him to halt and compelling them to have dinner. When Henry questions Emma about her affair, she admits it's in the past and apologizes. Naturally, Henry is profoundly hurt by this revelation, and he accuses her of turning down his advances earlier due to her infidelity. In their room once more, despite the husband's fury, the voice directs the couple to dance as it shows a video of their wedding. Henry declines to comply, but the sonic device in his head buzzes once more, keeping him restrained. As if that wasn't enough, the voice then tries to make them connect. At this point, Emma refrains from pushing her husband away, clearly uncomfortable with the situation. Suddenly, Henry comes to a halt, declaring that he cannot proceed any further. However, his sonic device is activated once more, leading to his collapse and bleeding from his ear. Afterward, as Henry tends to his injury, he turns to Emma with a question. He wonders why she didn't urge him to cease his actions earlier. Emma's mind drifts back to the opening scenes of the film, where she clarifies her belief that silence often outweighs speaking out. It becomes evident that the girl from the film's outset was a younger Emma, who had suffered the unthinkable. Henry, in response, offers reassurance to Emma, pledging to safeguard her and prevent any such incidents from occurring again. It's clear they're addressing their problems and making progress. Later, a burst of static disrupts the tranquility, and Joe's voice crackles through the intercom at the front gate. The driver, Joe, has stumbled upon Emma's notebook in his vehicle and is making an effort to return it. Emma and Henry urgently pound on the door, desperately trying to grab Joe's attention. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, their shouts are in vain, as Joe is too far away to hear them. But then, a clever idea strikes Emma. She reaches for a flashlight and shines it through the peephole, successfully catching Joe's attention. Finally, the driver can hear their calls for assistance. However, the relief is short-lived. As Joe attempts to climb over the gate, a sudden, unexpected assailant emerges and launches an attack, forcibly dragging him away. Witnessing this terrifying turn of events, Emma realizes that if the person responsible for their predicament has taken action against Joe, then there's no one left to watch over them. Acting swiftly, she inspects and disables the camera concealed within the smoke detector. To her relief, no electric shock awaits her, confirming her suspicions were correct. Henry expresses deep concern about Emma's bravery in this situation. Despite his reservations, Emma decides to investigate the small space under the kitchen island table she had noticed earlier. To her astonishment, she discovers a concealed compartment beneath it. Henry advises against it, but Emma ventures in, finding nothing useful and struggling to find a way out. Just as Henry hears someone entering the house, a startling turn of events unfolds. An intruder extracts Emma from her hiding place, utilizing a wrist-mounted device to activate an implant in her ear and administering a brown liquid that causes her to lose consciousness. When Emma regains consciousness, she finds herself dressed in an old-fashioned attire. To her surprise, the living room holds yet another unexpected revelation. A man, Ryan, is bound to a chair, unconscious. Emma starts to untie Ryan, but a mysterious voice warns her not to touch him. Ryan, visibly bewildered, becomes alarmed upon noticing a nearby knife. He turns to Henry for assistance, but tensions escalate quickly due to Ryan's affair with Henry's wife. Matters worsen when Ryan inquires, if she was so happy with you, why did she end up in bed with me? This infuriates Henry to the point where he grabs the knife, preparing to attack Ryan, but the voice intervenes. Instead, the voice instructs Henry to pass the knife to Emma and commands her to kill Ryan, threatening to harm Henry if she disobeys. Emma refuses, prompting the voice to torture Henry with an electric shock to his head, causing him to collapse as usual. With no alternative, Emma reluctantly stabs Ryan in the stomach, ultimately taking his life, albeit after a prolonged internal struggle. Later, Emma finds herself in her bedroom, consumed by grief for taking her lover's life. Henry, trying to comfort her, offers a glass of whiskey before leaving for chores. However, a sudden realization strikes her. The drink may be tampered with, similar to the one that initially incapacitated them. Cautious of the surveillance cameras, Emma pretends to drink, but discreetly pours it under the bedside table, out of view from the smoke alarm camera. She feigns unconsciousness when the masked person checks on her. After the intruder leaves, Emma calls for Henry and finds that the room, initially locked, is now open, exposing a concealed compartment behind a closet. Inside, she discovers another glass of whiskey. To her amazement, this reveals the masked man's central control room, where he's been surveilling the couple. Emma activates a vintage-looking TV that plays recordings from the present day, contrary to appearances. She unveils a startling revelation. The Eden Group, 
a cult, has set up an organization offering wives reformation services. They make vows to husbands, assuring them that their wives will be trained to display proper behavior, cook meals, and enhance their marital bonds in a bygone era fashion. Some clients even assert that their weekend encounters with the Eden Group have rescued their marriages. In a shocking twist, Emma discovers the vacation rental house as the sinister cult's operating center, aiming to empower men in unconventional ways within their marriages. A disturbing video exposes the truth. Henry secretly emptied his whiskey on the first night and changed Emma's clothes. His injury was a ruse when he left the house, and he orchestrated Ryan's arrival. Devastated by her husband's shocking role, Emma pretends to be unconscious after spotting Henry and the intruder on the camera monitor, disposing of Ryan's body nearby. As Henry and the intruder, known as the host, finalize plans to use the video of Emma killing Ryan to control her. She exits the hidden room. They remain unaware that Emma has already taken Henry's keys from there. Inside the house, Emma hops into the front seat, remembering the sonic shocker's potential signal. With the keys, she removes it from behind her ear. As she's about to start the car, the masked man reappears. Emma fights off the host, freeing herself and escaping into the fields. She stumbles, prompting the host to try activating the sonic shocker, but he realizes she's removed it. Emma sprints, leaving a fake blood trail from Henry's prior injury, distracting the host. She hits him with a shovel, making him fall and fatally hit his head on a branch. Emma retrieves the keys and disarms the shocker device from the host's wrist, just as Henry arrives. The wife pretends to awaken, faking an attack by the man. Henry, shocked by the host's death, starts off believing her, but suspicion arises when he sees blood near her ear. He realizes Emma removed the control device, likely uncovering the truth. Henry convinces Emma to join him in gathering their belongings inside the house. Once inside, Emma tries to use the shock device on Henry, but finds he has removed his own. In a surprising twist, Henry attacks her, forcefully pressing her head to the ground. Luckily, Emma breaks free from Henry by striking his groin and scratching his face with her wedding ring. She rushes to the kitchen, with Henry chasing closely. He stabs her in the leg, but she fights back by smashing a whiskey bottle over his head, creating an opening to escape again. Desperate for safety, she hurries to the hidden room, grabbing the sonic shocker injector. As Henry closes in, she uses it on him. He tosses her to the ground and starts explaining his actions, claiming they were for her benefit. Henry threatens to kill Emma after injecting her with the sonic shocker, but retracts the threat when she sincerely apologizes for her past mistakes. With unwavering determination, Emma wields the sonic shocker she obtained from the Eden Group leader. She sends a powerful electric pulse through Henry's head, frying his brain. Satisfied with her vengeance, she tosses the device into a whiskey-filled cup, symbolizing the end of her ordeal. Emma departs in the car, taking off her wedding ring, leaving the darkness that had consumed her life behind. As the sun rises, she drives along the road. Her journey takes an unexpected twist when she encounters a distant car crash, finding Joe still alive. She rushes to help, and Joe awakens, expressing gratitude while addressing her as Mr. Barrett. In response, she insists he call her Emma, concluding the story.